Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, we're talking vulnerability response and I want to show you something that's new in Tokyo that I actually get asked about a lot as recently as a, a week or two ago and I didn't know about this feature. And that feature is, what if we don't have a scanner or what if the vulnerabilities we want to track were provided by somebody else and not through a scanner, like maybe a pen test, you hired somebody to go do something or someone gave you a list of something for a particular product application or a system that you're managing. So ServiceNow has a solution for you in Tokyo and I just realized this when I was going through the features. Um, I'm in the Vulnerability Manager workspace, hopefully you've seen that before. What I want you to do to see this feature is type in manual and maybe VU, VUL, VULN and you'll see there's a new menu item for manual vulnerable item ingestion. So we got to upload file UI, upload file history, and the integrations themselves. I want to focus on this upload file UI and show I've got a couple of templates that you can download. Now this is really similar to platform wide. You go to a list, you can right click and you import, you can download the template. What's different in vulnerability management is there's two things going on. There's the asset and then there's the vulnerability. So you've got all the asset information plus you've got, well, what's vulnerable about that asset. If you know ServiceNow structure, assets and vulnerabilities are on different tables, which means you've got to handle this one a little bit differently than you would just uh, importing something to a table. So looking at this template here for manual ingestion, First thing you get, thank you service now, is some instructions with all the different column names that they're looking at. So there's the asset ID, MAC address, fully qualified domain name, NetBIOS, IP address, yada, yada, yada. All that different stuff. Some instructions on whether it's mandatory or optional, the description of those, and then some important information about, hey, don't change the column names. They should be in the first role. Don't change the order of these sheets that are in this spreadsheet. Um, vulnerability details should be present. Let's, let's say present only in the input manual detections, which is this sheet right here. So they're basically saying, leave this instructions sheet alone, only put your data here in the input manual detections. And then there's those columns we saw there in the instructions along the top there. So again, asset ID, information about the asset, there's the vulnerability, there's a vulnerability summary, and some stuff. So you should be able to copy and paste from most other vendors or most other spreadsheets that you might be getting this from. Now if that's Excel, there's obviously people who aren't using Excel and you may want a CSV version of this. I'm gonna open it in Excel, but it's essentially the same thing without all the pretty formatting, the green and stuff like that, no instructions on this one. And then you can copy and paste your stuff into the Excel file or the CSV file. And then it's as simple as importing the file that you downloaded and put all your data in. And then that's gonna bring in the vulnerabilities into ServiceNow so that you can manage them here within this vulnerability manager workspace. And it's gonna follow all the different stuff that would come on or happen around calculations, risk calculations, criticality, assignment rules, and here you're seeing some watch topics for actual vulnerabilities in this particular demo environment. But that's it. That's the new manual ingestion of vulnerabilities feature in Tokyo for vulnerability response. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in using ServiceNow vulnerability response when they, not all their vulnerabilities are being provided to them via their scanner. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning. Hey everyone, did you think the video is over? Please leave me a comment down below. I recorded the first part and I was like, you know what, why don't I just like do this and actually show them ingesting the manual vulnerability. So you're in luck. I'm adding this on at the end of the video. I hope you stuck around. We're gonna do this. What I did is I created a spreadsheet of like fake vulnerabilities. So I've got some basic data here on IP address. These are all fake. Um, these DNS names are all fake. Uh, OS names I just pulled from the sample file and uh, I made up the fully qualified domain name to uh, secretly include my domain name. So if you haven't been to Justin.house, you should check it out. Um, and then I've got some fake dates and times detected, right? So basically this looks like some vulnerabilities that someone might have handed somebody on a spreadsheet and we want to get these in a service now. So let's get to it. I'm going to kind of put this one up above my head since 
um, it's kind of visible that way. We're going to download this Excel file. I'm going to choose to use Excel um, because that's probably going to demo prettier than the CSV file, which is kind of blah and plain. Um, I'll go ahead and enable editing on this. And we'll position this over here on the left-hand side. I'm checking my other monitor to make sure that my screen frame isn't blocking anything. I think I've got it covered, okay? So we got the instructions. I went over there, that, in the beginning of the video. So let's just start populating this. We're going to do asset ID. Let's grab that um, DNS name. And I'm just going to copy and paste that over to the asset ID. I don't have MAC addresses, but I do have fully qualified domain name. So let's copy over that fully qualified domain name. And I'm going to stop talking and then just let you watch the rest of this in a little bit faster than me talking through it. Okay, welcome back. I sped that up hopefully for you in post. I've got this fully populated. I am going to save my work. Hopefully you saw me matching things in the columns there, but I've got my template populated. So now the next step is we're gonna upload this to ServiceNow. So I'm gonna choose this import file button and um, let's see here. Yeah, I can't really drag and drop it, but I've got it called Manual Ingestion Template. So let's go ahead and hit that Import File button. I'm going to bring it over here on the other window, just so you don't see some particulars about my personal computer. Not that I don't trust everyone, but you know, this is public on YouTube. Okay, so there's my file. Um, it's the same file, Manual Ingestion Template. Uh, ingestion template. I'm going to hit Submit. And uh, let's see what happens. I actually didn't practice this one, so I have no idea what's about to happen. Okay. Um, looks kind of like an import set at this point. Um, it's integration run, it's in progress. I don't know if this is going to self, it failed. Okay, cool. Vulnerability ID cannot be empty. So they all failed. But severity value five is not valid. Four is not valid. Okay, so let's do, let's go fix those real quick. Um, cause I want you to see this happen successfully. Let's take a look at the template. And remember the instructions tab at the beginning, it said uh, what the um, default values were. So it describes the severity. So it needs to be critical, high, medium, low, or none. Okay, so I need to match that up in my list there. So let's get rid of this guy um, so you can see me do it. And I've got five, four, three, and what did it say? It wanted um, critical, high, medium, low, or none. So I'm going to go with five is low. And that is uh, medium or four and three is high. I'm just making this up, everybody. Medium, um, wait, what was that? If three is high, <laughs> uh, four is medium, 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 and three is high. Okay, and five was low. Okay, so then two would be super high and want to be critical anyways and the other thing it didn't like is i didn't have a vulnerability id into everything so i'm going to need to make this up because i don't have a bunch of cves so let's just go ahead, let's just see if we can cross copy paste and if that'll work or not um, obviously if someone had actual cves uh, for the vulnerabilities they provided you and they're not making up data like justin is description of the vulnerability is added to the database only when the vulnerability id okay that is that where is the vulnerability? And since a, for example, CVE 2020 1026. Well, there's an example one. So let's copy paste that over. So at least we get something different in our spreadsheet. There we go. 2020 1026. I got something different. Okay, I'm going to save this. And we're going to try this again. So I'm going to go back to my import UI, which opened in a new window. So let's shut that window down and import file. I'm going to do that on my other screen. Bring it in with the changes. Hit submit. It is ready. Looks like this page kind of self updates, so I don't have to really do anything, which is kind of nice. You saw that on the previous one. It's not working. Okay, success. Okay, wow, that one actually worked. I'm not seeing any changes. Let's reload the form. There's my integration run. There's my integration process. I got a log file, successfully inserted all records, so Justin didn't screw that up. And um, we had some very unique. Um, 
some very unique names for the fully qualified domain name. I made sure I put my domain in there. So let's just go in and see if we can see those vulnerable items. I'm going to go to vulnerable items and we'll just do all. Oh, that was application vulnerability response. Man, I'm just clicking on all the wrong things in this extra bonus video that I'm trying to make for you all. Uh, vulnerable, that's container vulnerability response. Vulnerable response, vulnerable items. Okay, you can see my demo environment has like everything that ServiceNow has to offer um, there. There's my configuration items and my name. Fully qualified main name had Justin.house, remember that? And there was, uh, I can't remember how many there were. Oh my gosh, there they are, there's 10 of them. Does that match this over here? Uh, yes, I had, so one through 11. Okay, so I had 10. There they all are. There's the repeated CVEs. Remember I did that special one? There it is. 2020-10-26 from my Ubuntu server. So I pulled everything in. And oh my gosh, this is so cool. It even did an assignment group on uh, all of them. So I think that's pretty cool. So, okay, that's your bonus video. That's me actually doing a manual ingestion of vulnerabilities. Um, I wasn't planning on doing this, but after I recorded it and I was like going to ed do the edits, I'm like, let me just try this out and actually do it. So now you saw me do it, make a mistake, fix it. And now we have successfully manually ingested our import or our vulnerabilities into ServiceNow vulnerability response. It's goodbye for real this time. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think is interested in manually importing their vulnerabilities into ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.